Precision Measurement for Machinists, a Master Task Multimedia Training System. Simulations have been used successfully to teach the critical skills needed by astronauts, airline pilots, and doctors. Now you can use the power of simulations to reduce costly errors on your manufacturing machinery and rapidly develop skilled workers. Teaching people to use a micrometer or read a print has often been left to the occasional classroom session, or more likely, an experienced operator is called upon to pass along his knowledge when he has the time. But learning to measure accurately isn't just one task, it's many tasks. Measurement is a chain of events that can't afford any weak links. The machinist must first read the print to locate the feature and find the tolerance that applies. Select the correct measuring instrument based on that tolerance. Use the instrument correctly. Read the instrument accurately and perform a calculation using the print tolerances to determine any adjustment amount. One mistake in that process, and scrap, rework, tool damage, and even potential machine damage can be the result. Master Task Training Systems introduces precision measurement for machinists. State-of-the-art courseware that enables you to strengthen the skills of your existing machinists and develop new trainees to higher levels of skill in less time and at lower cost. The master task method of training is based on one simple idea. If there are 10 steps required to perform a task correctly, the person must know and understand all 10. Anything less allows people to use trial and error methods and develop bad habits. And now, learning the correct way has never been easier. Computer-based simulations of measurement tasks will allow your personnel to try their hand at all types of measuring instruments. They can even make mistakes without making a mess of your production uh -oh. schedules. Whether they failed to understand a print, misread a gauge, or made a simple math error, the computer instantly corrects their mistake. That's the wrong answer. The converted value is 533 thousandths and 5 tenths. Ten lessons make up the PMM, Precision Measurement for Machinist, course. Over 35 measuring instruments are covered, including everything from the steel rule to coordinate measuring machines. Both analog and digital versions of most common gauges are shown. Shop math, the interpretation of prints, and reading and understanding of geometric, dimensioning, and tolerancing symbols are all included. Whether you're using metrics today, or will be required to in the near future, the PMM course provides everything you need. Simply select inch, metric, or both when you register a person in the computer, and their CD-ROM tests are automatically adjusted to test them on the skills they need for your situation. Each lesson is comprised of a professionally produced instructional videotape, a worksheet, and a CD-ROM-based test. The CD-ROM simulations allow you to teach all your operators the skills they need to get the most from your investment in measuring instruments without the fear of costly mistakes. These test questions use realistic measurement situations. The portion on micrometers, for example, provides a series of questions that require the person to read various types of mics. But rather than just teach the basics, the course seeks to eliminate common mistakes as well. For example, the 25 thousandths error, which commonly occurs when reading a mic, is addressed specifically in the instruction. If the thimble scale is reading in the lower range, anywhere from 0 to 5, you have crossed the 25 thousandths graduation. And tested thoroughly within the CD-ROM. On which micrometer has the 25 thousandths graduation been crossed? Click on the correct micrometer. Course Content Precision measurement for machinists includes 10 video lessons that serve as the source of instruction. Each of your trainees will receive the same accurate and consistent instruction, no matter which shift they work on or who they might work with. Some of the topics covered are basic print reading, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, the inch and metric systems of measurement, shop math, micrometers, calipers, rulers, 
height gauges, roughness gauges, plug gauges, thread dimensions and measurement gauges, open setup devices, optical comparators, and coordinate measuring machines. Each lesson tape runs an average of 25 minutes and is suitable for classroom or self-paced learning situations. Each lesson is divided into four to six parts based on the topics covered. Your personnel will see examples of actual work pieces and prints, as well as 3D graphics and animations to help explain some of the more difficult concepts. Worksheets for each of the 10 lessons are found in the student guide. They can be used as a pretest for new hires, a post-test after the instruction, a self-study guide, or as a tool for group discussion after watching a lesson within a classroom setting. The questions are divided into groups which match the divisions found in the instructional videos. This allows both self-paced learners and instructors to quickly locate the source of the answer within the instruction. Answers to all the student guide questions are found in the leader's guide. The final test is on the CD-ROM. There is a CD-ROM for each lesson. Tests include questions that require the recall of facts, the reading of prints and instruments, the calculations of values, as well as the performance of a simulation of the measurement process. While these simulations are interesting and fun, your personnel will find they cannot treat them as a video game without any consequences. Uh oh No, that's wrong. If an answer is incorrect, the question will appear again the next time they return to the test. Here you see the test on inch micrometers. What is the total measurement reading of this one to two inch vernier micrometer? Enter the value in inches. The trainee can rotate the mic to read the vernier by moving the slider back and forth. Then enter the value on the keypad. Good answer. The total measurement reading is one inch 250 thousandths and 5 tenths. Other simulations require the person to perform math operations. What is the upper tolerance limit for this feature? Use addition to find the upper limit, then enter the correct value. In this example, the computer has created the math problem by randomly selecting a pair of numbers from a range of values. That means trainees can't simply memorize the right answers since each time the question appears, another set of numbers is selected. Here you see a coordinate measuring machine. For this question, the trainee must perform a simulated measurement of perpendicularity by selecting the correct measurement sequence from the computer. What is the first step in measuring perpendicularity? Click on the correct menu item. That's the right answer. Then they must move the probe by looking at the top and side view of its position relative to the hole in the workpiece. The image of the probe is moved to the correct location to touch off on the workpiece surface. And if they are wrong... Incorrect answer. The course management system. Whether you have one trainee or hundreds, the master task course can handle it. Ten classes of 50 persons each can be simultaneously entered in the computer. The class can be made up of individuals on different shifts or from different departments within the plant. Once a class has completed their training, their records can be stored as a text file or printed out. The class can then be deleted by clicking on the Delete All button and another class entered. Therefore, an unlimited number of trainees can be accommodated. Each leader will have a password assigned for each class. To begin, the leader clicks the Manage Class button and enters their password. They can then access the records of the individuals as well as review a status report for the overall class. Each individual within a class will also have a password assigned to them. They must enter their password to have access to their tests. The leader controls which tests and which questions within a test will appear for his class members. The first level of instructor control is a selection of inch, metric, or both when registering trainees for the course. If inch is selected, questions dealing specifically with metric instruments will not appear for that trainee. The second level of instructor control is to make tests active or inactive, either on an individual basis or for the whole class. An active lesson has a letter A displayed. 
If the leader makes a test inactive for the class, a letter C appears in the active column. If the leader turns the test off for the class, no one in the class will be presented that test. In this example, no one in this class will see test 3 until the leader turns it back on. Tests can also be controlled on an individual basis. With a test set to inactive, the test is skipped over and the trainee will see the next active test. The third level of control is the Adapt Test screen. This password protected screen allows the leader to turn individual questions on or off for his class. Some questions are general, that is, all students will see them, while others will only be presented to students who will be working with inch or metric instruments. If the leader believes certain questions do not relate to their situation, those questions can be turned off. Turning a question off only affects students registered in this class. Other classes are not affected. The computerized record keeping system, along with the leader's guide, provides all of the resources your supervisors need to administer the course. The systematic approach to training the course provides and the documentation it produces meets ISO 9000 criteria. Each time an individual completes an attempt at a test, their personal file is updated. The data collected for each attempt includes the date, the number of minutes spent on the test, the number of correct and incorrect answers, the number of questions the individual has not yet answered, the current percentage grade, and a list of the question numbers which were answered incorrectly. If a person is having problems with a particular group of questions, the course administrator can use the leader's guide as a reference. The answers to the CD-ROM questions in the leader guide are all cross-referenced to scene numbers within the lesson video. The narration scripts for each lesson are included in the manual as well. The instructor or supervisor can quickly locate the source of the answer from the instruction and assist the trainee with their problem. How does a CD-ROM test work? Before a person begins their first CD-ROM test, it is suggested that they complete the test tutorial. The tutorial is also found on the sample CD-ROM you received. This brief training session explains the way in which the interactive buttons on the test screens work and demonstrates the types of questions the student will be seeing within each test. And to help the trainee along, a show answer button is available for these practice questions. After a person selects their class and clicks on the take a test button, the computer asks the individual to select their name from the list, click OK, and then enter their password. If they have been registered by the leader in that class, the test begins. The first question then appears. In the text box at the bottom of the screen, the text of question one is displayed. Because it is possible that some trainees may have poor reading skills, each test question is provided both orally and in text form. What is the maximum number of normal views that can be found on a print? Enter the number of normal views. If the person wants to hear the question again, the repeat audio button can be clicked with the mouse. Based on the answer selected, the computer provides either the correct or incorrect feedback. Correct answer. Up to six normal views can be found on a print. Whether the answer is right or wrong, an explanation of the correct answer is provided. This serves to correct a trainee's misunderstandings when a wrong answer is entered and to reinforce their correct answers. If a wrong answer is entered, the trainee may want to use the Review Questions button. It allows them to scan back through the previously answered questions to see what they did wrong. The Resume Test button returns them to the point where they stop the test and continues the testing process. As a trainee progresses through a test, the current lesson and question number are indicated in the left column. On the right side of the box is shown the number of correct and incorrect answers at this time and the total number of questions remaining to be answered. The message box at the top right of the screen reveals what action to take to proceed. For example, if a trainee does not click in the correct area on the screen, or perform the correct interaction required by a question, the message box would indicate what the trainee should do next. Once a question has been answered and the feedback presented, 
The message box indicates click anywhere to continue. This is the prompt box. When the mouse cursor is moved over a button or a response area on the screen, the prompt box indicates the purpose for that function. This is especially useful for new students or those that have not had recent experience with the courseware. The exit button allows the trainee to stop the test at any time. When exit is clicked, the computer updates the individual's file to indicate how many minutes they spent on the test and how many test items they completed correctly and incorrectly. When the person returns to the test, they will be asked those questions they missed on their previous attempt, as well as any remaining unanswered questions. While many simulation questions have a number of steps, it is still considered a single question. In other words, they must correctly perform each of the steps to receive credit for a right answer for the question. Getting eight of the 10 steps required to complete a task is simply not acceptable when it comes to precision measurement. 